Welcome back to Parenting on the Ranch. Today is the final day of our declutter journey. So stick around to find out how we did and if we are in maintenance mode. We are a family of five living on a ranch in Texas. On our channel, we will cover a variety of topics. These are solely based on our experience and opinions, and we do not hold any degrees in childhood development or education. Welcome back to Parenting on the Ranch. I'm Jessica. And I'm Curtis. So we have embarked on a two week long decluttering journey. If you've been following along, it's been a process. Yeah. And this is our second time decluttering our home. The first time approximately took a month, month and a half. And throughout this journey, it didn't take near as long, I don't think. No, not really. But maybe an hour or two a day is all. Yeah, but setting aside a you know, setting aside an entire day for one room I think was beneficial because here at the ranch things always come up or mm -hmm. our plans don't always go as we like. So I can't just say I'm gonna do it for an hour and that's it because sometimes rooms take longer especially if it's your first time around, give yourself tons of leeway and just have patience with it. Go at it slow and... And don't feel bad if you don't get it done in a day. You know, sometimes it's gonna take two. Stuff happens, life happens. The main thing to remember too, the first time that we did it, I really wish that we had video of that mm -hmm. because this week you really don't get a sense of how much stuff we really donated and just threw away or we sold. But a good process, especially if it's your first time going through it, if you are making a calendar out like I did, you know, put a major room one day and the next day give yourself just a small 15 to 20 minute project. Mm -hmm. Spice cabinet, medicine cabinet, um, sock drawer, small things that way you do feel accomplished accomplished like you are make you have to build the momentum mm -hmm. to really just power through it and get it done yeah, or start small you know do do a couple of days where it's short easy things that way you get the momentum going you feel like you've you've accomplished something and then you could tackle the bigger rooms you, you could tackle the living room you can tackle the the kitchen or whatever. I mean, those were the one things. The, the kitchen, I think, was probably the biggest mm -hmm. room that we decluttered because we got rid of a lot of dishes. We got, a, you know, a, a silverware. We got rid of some I think pots the, and pans and I cups. And the kitchen was the biggest room. The other biggest hurdle was the laundry, mm -hmm. so the clothes. And you know, in finding those small projects, you can follow the Facebook group Motherhood Simplified. She does. You know, week long purge thons where she gives you those small tasks. And in the group, you can post for accountability. You know, I think that's a big thing. I want somebody to know what I did and how I did it. And to be able to see before and afters where they can maybe help me tweak some more things. Mm -hmm. You can also um, use the affiliate link below for the Motherhood Simplified courses where she gives you even more advice, tips, and tricks. And back to the purge thought, the good thing about those is she gives a lot of grace. She's doing core and clean right now. Her name is Krista. Um, she's doing what's called core and clean right now. It's a 30 day long purge thought. But one day she gives you tasks to do and the next day she gives you a pro tip. So that way you can kind of keep up with it. Mm -hmm. So, I think do, at the very first time that we purged, I did the purge of thon. So it was socks and laundry and just those things. Yeah. And you know, we really, we really dumped what we had. You know, the, the amount of clothes that we had, the amount of dishes and stuff that we had and, and, and just... Decoration. Yeah, decorations, even, you know, some major furniture. You know, we really took our house from a very cluttered thing that we had before to what it is now and you know even I see a big difference mm -hmm. but you know it's not only the difference that I see in our house 
uh, you know, easier to walk around at night when it's dark or because, you know, I, when I get up you know, at 430 in the morning, yeah. it's dark in here. I don't want to turn on lights to wake up the kids and stuff, um, you know, and then leave and then her have to deal with them, even though a lot of times that happens, mm-hmm. you know, but not only does it make it easier to control the flow of the house, but it also looks better. I mean, it's it's not bare. It, it's not bare by any means. But it is, it has a nice flow to it. It has a nice look to it. And, you know, I'm glad that we did this. You know, a lot of the stuff that we have, we really didn't need. And, you know, especially when you get stuff like a storage building or something and you haven't used it for a year or so, yeah. you don't need it no more. Just get rid of it. Yeah. Well, that's one major question. Why do you want to declutter? Mm-hmm. You know, functionality of your home. You know, I talked in one video that when we daydreamed, we'll say, about buying this house, we had an initial plan. You know, minimal furniture, minimal things on the floor, so it's easier to vacuum and pick up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, ju- and the flow and style of our house. And in that video I talked about like we packed up when we bought our house we had to do some construction to it we made a couple of rooms and block things off but when we moved we we took us three days oh, and okay. three huge moving trucks partially loaded moving, well, moving trucks it wasn't you know, it wasn't cram packed or anything like we were moving across the country yeah but the floor of it was full yeah and it was what a twenty. It was, it was the foot big truck. one, yeah. Something like that. But I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Now, when we did the boxes and the things, it was a little more full, mm-hmm. but you know, and we moved in and we just like threw up all the stuff on the walls, everywhere. We just put the furniture and we acquired quite a bit more furniture mm-hmm. after we moved in. And just, you know, we talked about why we did why we why I wanted to do it in the first place because the house was so hard to maintain. Granted, I don't think to an outsider our house really looked dirty, you know, cluttered, you know, it looked clean, but to me setting in it all day, it's like, oh my lord, you know. But then we you know, go on to more, you know, not just the flow and function, but how it affects our family. You know, more things accumulate more dust and cause more respiratory issues for the kids. And takes longer to clean. So yes. it takes away time from the kids and Yeah. But you know I've noticed a difference in cleaning our house. Mm-hmm. So the benefits to decluttering. I've noticed a difference in the time it takes to clean our house. I've noticed a difference in my overwhelmedness is that even no word? <laughs> like the way that I feel, the anxiety I feel about, mm-hmm. oh God, I gotta clean the house. I need to do those dishes, you know, and just trying to find a place for things. And when you have so many things and so much furniture, you can't really buy, you know, if you find a piece of furniture you really like, like it's my style, I really like it, I could use it for this, and you could see all that. If you have so much stuff, you can't really buy a new piece of furniture because then where are you going to put it? Yep. So, you know, I've noticed... But now, don't declutter just to buy new furniture. Yes. You know, I think that was one of the major things that we had here. You know, we when we moved in and we had the mindset of, you know, we want to keep everything minimalized or whatever, you know, we get here and we put all of our old furniture into from our old house and... You know, we, we bumped up about 700 square feet in this house. Mm-hmm. So it looked empty compared to what the, the other thing was. Yeah. So rather than sticking with that, which I wish we would have then, you know, knowing now what we knew then, or whatever it is. But we just, we just had a mismatch of stuff. I mean, things didn't really match. They didn't go together. You know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So we've really kind of, throughout this, have honed our style and things that we like. But... You know, another benefit that I noticed, other than the ease of cleaning and the way that I feel, because I'm home all day, 
is I've noticed a change in our kids, and that is a huge one for us. Mm -hmm. Now, small kids can have anxiety too. And when we first moved in, I believe it was, we have five bedrooms. So one of the, we bump, we put, we, we arranged the kids to where we would have a playroom. They had an entire 10 by 10 room that was their playroom. What is now our pantry. <laughs> yeah. And granted, when we moved in, they were five months. Three and four. Though. Three and four, I think. So, I mean, they had a lot of toys. It, at that stage, they really didn't know how to play. Play together or play with toys. Or pick up. <laughs> yeah, or pick up. <laughs> but they were also in the stage that they were that there was so much stuff they would just dump buckets out on the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a we had two play kitchens and we probably had 200 pieces of play food. Mm -hmm. Because it, like at one time they had the play kitchens in their own rooms and then then we moved them in the playroom. But yeah, they had 500 of the big block Legos and you know, there was a couple times where I walked into the playroom and couldn't see the floor from all the toys. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's where I'm getting at. With the, they had so much stuff, they would just dump it out looking for something, or they would just dump it out because they couldn't figure out what to play with first. And then it got to where, throughout the day, they were just walking on the toys. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't bother them. It didn't seem to, you know, affect them in any way. They would just walk on them. That led to a lot of broken toys, a lot of our AC vents are in the floor. So a lot of the small little kitchen toys falling mm -hmm. in the AC vents and having to retrieve those. And now they have four 12 by 12 by 12 inch high buckets and two small drawers worth of toys that they actually play with everything. Mm -hmm. And without encouragement, they get out the Lego bucket, they play Legos. They will put the Legos up, or at least put them back in the bucket before they get out the cars or the Peppa Pig. So, I mean, just going from thousands of toys to a small, maybe, what would you say, 75 toys? Mm -hmm discounting the Legos but pro not even that much probably 50 toys if I take out the Legos <laughs> but they only have about 50 Legos in there and they're the big ones no. maybe so let's talk about the process of that we go through when we're trying to decide what to keep and what to get rid of how would you how would you recommend to our wonderful viewers here yeah. how to make that decision well, I just, when I go into a room, I mean, I just kind of look at it as a room. Not as like, I don't even know how to explain that. Like, I take in it, I take in the room overall. How does it make me feel when I'm in that space, you know? Because if I feel like it's chaos, then I know I have a big job to do. Mm -hmm. um, then in looking at the things, I want... I would like, I would like, I don't even know how to say it. I would like, you know, pieces of furniture that are multi-purpose. I would like, you know, I just want it to have a good flow. I don't want there to be a whole lot of stuff that I have to dust, that I have to wipe off, that I have to vacuum around. So. And it doesn't take two hours to clean up mm -hmm. just to get, you know, to get ready for nap time just to get it all back out after nap time yeah you know and then and you know something else to consider you know not so much with toys but with anything in your house if you haven't used it in six months or three months or a year yeah. or whatever you know you don't need it get rid of it but you know even in the usage if it's say like decor for instance you know we had this discussion about Say we had to leave our house in a moment's notice. Okay, think about it. If we had to leave our house in a moment's notice, other than each other and the kids, what would we take from our home? 
what is most important other than the obvious like you know important paperwork and stuff like that but what would we really take do we have any sentimental value to anything in each room or in the house as a whole mm-hmm. you know get I think I talked about my wedding dress throughout this decluttering journey you know obviously I don't use it every day I don't I mean I don't even have it put up. It's hanging in my closet. I, like, I see it every day when I go to get dressed. But it holds a sentimental attachment. You know, I would take that. So, speaking of sentimental things, I want to know where they are in the house. Not, did I put it in the closet or is it in the attic or base, wherever you would put it in your house. So, just, you know, you want your, I want my house to be an extension of like me, my memories, my attachments to things, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, in evaluating your room, you know, what really matters to you? Because, you know, if it has value to you, I would want it out. I would want people to be able to see it and it not be, you know, tucked away if it, mm-hmm. if it could possibly be. When you're working on your closet, you know, uh, here a tip for that is, Turn all your hangers around backwards and go about your daily lives. And after two weeks, if you still have hangers that are backwards, discard those. You know, donate them or whatever. You know, obviously you're not wearing them. You know, I wear basically the same seven to ten outfits every couple weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, so turn them around backwards. And if you don't use them, then get rid of them. And that will drastically re- reduce the amount of clothes that you have in your closet. But, you know, we talk about clothes. We talk a lot about the kids' clothes. I want, Obviously, I want my kids to have clothes. I want them to have options. But, you know, things to consider with your clothes. Do you like the texture of it? How does it make you feel when you wear it? Um, you know... Do you feel comfortable or and confident or you know are you self-conscious but how often do you wear it you know is it just a seasonal outfit does it fit or is it too big too small and you know clothes are a commodity you can get anywhere mm-hmm. so you know with the kids Cassidy and Raven are two different sizes Cassidy wears a size larger than Raven so things that are in good shape and that I know Raven will wear as of right now when she gets to that size I do keep them in our closet so you know I feel okay with if Raven needed an extra pair of jeans or something like that I could go in there and get it and same thing with Gage I buy stuff on sale because if he's gonna go outside and play in it I don't want to pay full mm-hmm. price but you know you can keep a small set of clothes like we both have a bucket of things that we can't wear anymore but we would like to because they fit all the criterias of how we feel when we wear it we like the style we like the fabric whatever it is so keep that in mind but yeah if you have it everything that i decluttered I go with the rule of if I haven't used it in six months because you know we could have just went through Christmas and it's seasonal or you know I could have just gotten it and it just not be my taste so I give everything six months at least you know if you if you have something you know pack it away mm-hmm. you know that's that's one way that you can determine whether you're gonna use it or not you know if it's out in your cabinets it's gonna say well, did I use that last month? I don't really remember. You know, pack it up in a box, but don't don't take it. You know, don't take it to a storage building or something like that. Pack it up in a box, put it in a in a cabinet or something in your kitchen, and then if you get into that box, then you used it and then put it back in your cabinet. But a good tip for that is when you box the stuff up, write the date on mm-hmm. the box. That way, you know when you box that up, and give yourself an end date. I always give myself a month at least. If I haven't gotten into it, then I can donate it. Mm -hmm. So the big question that you may be wondering um, in this video is, are we in maintenance mode? 
I think we can successfully say we are in maintenance mode. As long as we do, <laughs> as long as we do the daily or your midday and nightly resets of the dishes, wiping the table and counters and things like that off, it, it maintains itself. As far as the laundry, we do the method of start one load and go completely through that to putting it up before we start the second load. That keeps the laundry up and it's easy to maintain. At least we try to. Yeah, some days, I mean, life here at the ranch gets crazy and we can't get it done. Mm -hmm. But as long as we, you know. That's our goal. Have that goal and, <laughs> and lead with that every morning, then we can get it done. And I try, as far as, you know, picking up and cleaning up, I try to get it done first thing in the morning, especially the laundry. That way it's hopefully done by mm -hmm. noon and then I have the rest of the day to do something else. Yeah, especially during the summer because during the summer we don't use our, our uh, dryer, our clothes right. dryer. We actually hang our clothes out on some clotheslines. So get it, get it, we get the washing done first thing in the morning. That way we can hang it outside by nine o'clock or so, mm -hmm. and it's normally dry by at noon. least noon to you know, one o'clock, something like that. Yeah, today it would have dried in five minutes. But <laughs> but we are in maintenance mode. So if you decide to do this decluttering journey, a couple of things. Go start small. Do small projects that you can do within 30 minutes. At least a lot 30 minutes for it. If you have small kids, help make them join in with you. Mm -hmm. Give them projects that they can do without you having to over supervise them that you're confident that they can do. You know, throwing things away or stuff like that. Get them involved, especially if your goal is to be decluttered and stay that way. Then, especially for me, I want my kids to have the same goal in life. So when they start at three, five, and six, hopefully it, it doesn't become overwhelming for them in the future. Mm -hmm. um, make a schedule. Give yourself the grace in the schedule to have overlapping days of projects. You know, things like garages and attics and stuff like that, they're not going to be done in a day. That might be a two or three day project. So a lot enough time or overly a lot time that way you can have the success in each area of your home if you want to start this journey have goals for yourself like we have goals we want it to our house to work for us we want it to have the feel of our outward personality and style we also don't want it to harshly affect our kids as far as dust and things like that. And us being away from them by cleaning or anything like right. that, you know, taking time away from them that we could be doing something else, something fun, something educational or something like that with them. Right. So we hope that you like our declutter series. If you have any questions, you can reach us at here on YouTube, Instagram, or email us at parentingontheranch at gmail.com. So if you have if you have taken part in this, leave a comment below with any kind of anything that you yeah. have realized some notice, maybe figured out how to do something that's super easy. You know, leave a comment below and let us know that we can share with with all of y'all, and uh, you know, just kind of help each other out. You know, that's what that's what parenting is all about. Not only raising the kids but we as parents need to stick together and help each other out as well so we thank you very much for tuning in please make sure that you click on the subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner as well as the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos you know we have typically a video on friday that is a topical style video and then on tuesdays we have a mosh podge of different kind of videos and then just you know our everyday videos that we're going to have uh, you know scattered throughout the week if we have something that happens here on the ranch yeah. and we do have some plans coming up in the future that we're not quite ready to release uh, full information about 
make sure that you subscribe so you get that when that happens. So, until next time, thank you for joining us on our decluttering journey, and happy, happy parenting. parenting.